Hello. Hold up. It says there's a problem with my connection. So let me make sure my Wi Fi is on there. Wi Fi is on. Wi Fi is connected. All right. Well, we're just going to roll with it. Aloha from Maui. I'm applying some uh, M grain that I actually mixed with Panaway. In the back of my neck here, I've got some structural issues that tend to get aggravated by tight muscles. So if you've never tried M-Grain with a roller top on it, that uh, might help if you have some muscle issues or some structural issues. <clears throat> my name's Serena Garretts. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm here in Maui, Hawaii. And I am so grateful to be here today in Spruce Society to share slow connection, it says. How could that be possible? I just got new Wi-Fi yesterday. Let me double check again once more my Wi-Fi connection. Thanks for your patience. It's gonna double, double check that. It says we're connected. Oh, I'm gonna go with we're connected. I see one person watching, so that means we're connected. So I am really grateful to be here today to share with you about the ancient art of anointing. And as I was just about to take a sip of my beverage here, which, hi, is that Jessica? Aloha, Jessica. I was just about to ask everybody what they're drinking or what was the last drink from Young Living that they had or the last supplement that they took with a beverage from Young Living. And um, mine today, right now, I'm having some uh, mushroom coffee that has the inner beauty collagen powder I always put a spray top on my five mil cinnamon bark vitality it's into not every single time on my coffee, but almost every single time. So I'm super honored to be here. Oh, Jessica, thank you so much. Thank you. I decided to wear this crystal uh, crown that Dr. Pat gave me on my uh, 50th birthday. It's not true. It, it came to me after she passed. It reminds me of our 50th birthday. And today I am sharing with you not only the things that Dr. Pat has taught me about anointing in the last five years and beyond, um, but I, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's really sweet. She, she wore it at my 50th birthday. Um, but I have been uh, personally anointing myself for over 30 years. So um, it says slow connection on my end. So Jessica, just let me know if it's not watchable, if there's something really wrong, if you could please type that, I'd be really grateful. Um, but I'm going to actually go ahead and take this off because as beautiful and as amazing as it is, the little metal thing pressing on my head is not the best thing for me for giving a class. So I'm going to keep it really close to me. Let me just put it here on my knee, but not on my head. So I was asking if you could uh, please drop in the comments below the last Young Living beverage you had or the last Young, su young Living supplement that you, okay, great. The last Young Living supplement that you uh, put into a beverage. So if you had Ningxia, if you had, like I'm having Inner Beauty Collagen, I put some cinnamon in there. What's the last Young Living infused beverage that you had? Drop it in the comments below and get your note paper and grab an oil while you're at it. Just think holy, holy, holy and go grab whatever comes into your hand um, and get ready for the rest of this because I have a lot of information for you, which you can just absorb and listen to. There will be a replay. Um, so you can just listen this first time and then come back and make Nisha Red this morning. Woohoo, Jessica, way to go. Beyond the 14-day reset. Go, 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 go. So proud of you for Nisha Red. I'll be having it later. I'm having this uh, right now. So a big mahalo to everyone joining us for the ancient art of anointing make sure you have an oil with you it doesn't matter which one like i said just go grab whatever you are close to and let's go ahead and um yes thank you teague ningsha and zing with lunch yes 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 jessica's laughing at me making faces i love it so let's drop our oil together whether you have yes cheryl thank you oh wow it tells me there's one person watching and there's like four i'm really excited thank you for being here just can't trust that um, but i can see your comments so i'm gonna go ahead and drop a joy into my hand here and i um, getting present with this joy oil, remembering as I slow down that there's rose oil in here, there's jasmine in here, and there's ylang ylang in here, and I can activate the oil and become more conscious and more present before anointing my heart. <sighs> 
number one key to anointing is connecting with your oils. And I'll be listing it out for you later. I have some suggested, uh, yay, thanks, Jessica. I have some suggested um, protocols, suggested oils, and all of that. But really, um, it's largely intuitive and making sure that you get more oils on yourself. See, I'm like high from that. I don't know about you, but like when you stop everything else and you give gratitude for the living essence of the plants that are in the essential oils, oh, they hear you. And they respond to your intention and then you activate them you become present and you're humble in gratitude and you're saying thank you for coming to bring more love into my heart to help my heart steady and expand and they just go right in that those oils go right in there and do that so the, the the i'm gonna give you the history and all of that but i just wanted to say in this moment because i felt like we should drop some oils that the number one most important thing in the art of anointing is presence in gratitude for the vehicle of the oil it's coming from the divine it's divine healing energy that comes in and covers our cells trillions of times over or something 40,000 times over are you a merophore drop me an oil drop emoji if you are mysteriously drawn to putting essential oils on your body with intention and gratitude, which is going to be you if you're in this class, go ahead and give me one of those oil drop emojis. I'd really appreciate it if you take the time because you know what that does. It bumps it up so that more people know that this is happening. They can come learn all this too. So thank you for playing along. <clears throat> Do you enjoy applying oils to others? Do you share valor rollers on strangers or put thieves on your little's feet? Massaging in raindrops? Drop me a drop if you're one of those people who loves to put oils on other people for any reason. You're like, oh, come here, let me roll this on you. Are you one of those people? Drop it down below. Do you naturally create or enjoy following oiling protocols and rituals to assist you with certain healing, protection, or mindset goals? Drop me a drop. If you're one of those people like me, have you had memories or fantasies of other lives where you were an oil-bearing priestess in a sacred healing temple? Are you attracted to Mary Magdalene? Yes. Yes, that would be me. Yes, in the name of Jesus and all that is holy, I am attracted to Mary Magdalene. Drop me those roses, ladies. Now, I'm not going to get religious on you, but we are going to talk just for a moment about activating and embodying your inner oil priestess. And then we're going to let the next well, next level of your purpose unfold just like that. Ta-da! Give me some purple hearts, please, if you're enjoying this so far. Thank you so much for being with me all the way here from Maui. This class is for you. I know you're here to learn about the history of anointing with oils and why you want to revive this ancient practice in your everyday life. I'm selling you on this. This is too funny. I can't not be this way. I'm sorry. This is who I am. If you don't know me, now you know me. <laughs> I'll also share some sample protocols and offer some suggested correspondences with several of the most holy oils. <clears throat> so let's take a sip of something. Grab another drop of something. Thanks for all those emojis and hearts and roses. Cheryl, I see you. I see you over there with your rose. Okay. Get ready to learn. I'm going to give you a quick little history on me and anointing and why I'm giving this class. So I've been anointing myself for 32 years. How long have you been putting essential oils on your body? Please drop it down below for everyone to see how long you have been dropping essential oils on your body. Now, a lot of us were putting on toxic perfumes as children. I was, loves Baby Soft. I was taught to spray it right on my thyroid, right on my voice <laughs> chakra, right? Spraying those, all that. We were all taught that, okay? So that's like a, a diluted, a diluted remnant of anointing. Jessica, 10 years. Cheryl, six years. Those are a long time to be putting oils on. I love that, love that. So <clears throat> I first studied magical aromatherapy as a teen, and I'm, I'm 51 now, okay? So as like a 15, 16-year-old girl, I studied magical aromatherapy, and um, I started putting patchouli oil on my feet for abundance, and I was buying it at this local smoke shop. Um, I wasn't allowed in the, you know, the 18 and over section, but I would go in to buy the patchouli oil, and I read folklore that if you put patchouli on your feet that it would attract abundance and so that was my first intuitive um 
use of anointing. If you have a particular memory uh, that you want to share at any point and you want to share that below of the, your first time putting any oil, I don't think it was a pure oil, but I did believe it was pure at that time and I actually had no clue what pure oils were. I was 16 years old and this was 30 something years ago. So I still put patchouli on my feet for abundance today and so can you. Um, as I continued my spiritual studies, I learned about utilizing oils for their various energetic and folklore attributes. So I came at it from like magical herbalism and um, like craft making. Um, so I also learned, I entered the world of blending and essential oil usage through this path. And I have a natural gift for blending. So I was blending, buying essential oils from another company 30 years ago and um, bulk and then blending uh, basically priestess oils and anointing oils and um, all of that, holy mists and all this stuff uh, for people's spiritual practice and then reselling it with my own brand um, all the way back then. So in my 20s, I studied proper aromatherapy. So I was coming from like a folklore and like astrological correspondence perspective and like which one aligns with which, you know, energy of this and that and the other thing. And then I started learning actual aromatherapy in my 20s. Um, and by then, at that point, it was books and correspondence courses. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you learned from a book and had a hard time learning before you found Young Living, before the internet. Um, I created my first small business selling custom spiritual oil blends for self-anointing rituals 30 years ago. So we're going to fast forward to over five years ago when I met my enroller and my mentor, my beloved, my departed, uh, beloved Dr. Pat McLean. And she said to me, the oils speak life into dormant talents and dreams. The oils speak life into dormant talents and dreams from Dr. Pat. And right then, my inner oil priestess woke right back up. I knew I had to get oils on myself and others regularly and in plenty. It was a revived calling for sure. So um, you did already tell me how long you've been using oils. So I am going to move on now to the history of anointing. So now you know how long I've been anointing. You know how long I've you've been anointing. So let's get into the mystery of this a little bit. So a long, long, long time ago, there was an ancient tradition of women who worked with sacred oils for the highest good of all. These women were called murophores. And that's M-Y-R-R-H-O-P-H-O-R-E-S. Murophore. Okay, it's a real word. And they were also known as myrrh bearers or mistresses of the oils. They were priestesses of an even older order whose time has returned and is with us once again. The work of these women was to anoint those approaching death and to prepare the way for the soul to soar. The sacred oil would realign people with their true soul essence and help carry them safely to the other side. The Murafor would hold a vigil, usually three days, while praying and uttering the intonation into the oil. The combination of softly spoken or sung voice and holy perfume healed the wounds in the soul caused by events, not only in this life, but also in the past. In modern days, this position is unknowingly usually held by a family member, priest, death doula, or hospice worker. So... I'm going to pause here in the history and I want to just address this and I want to just encourage you that if you or someone like, you know, somebody who's passing, who's transitioning, or if you have a friend or family member who has someone who's passing, transitioning to the other side and you can get oils on them, do it. I don't, it doesn't even matter which oils, but if you could get frankincense, white angelica, any, anything, really anything. It's so good for their soul. It makes the transition easier. This is a thing. This is like actually a thing. Like people for a long time have been really kind of unconscious in our society about handling death. It's like, oh, they died or like whatever. It's just, they're in the hospital and then they die. It's like, or some priest comes and says some prayer, but it's not like, it's supposed to be a, a, a ritual. You know, there's supposed to be some ritual there and, and anything that you can do to bring in more high vibration frequencies of, of spiritual protection and, and holiness like frankincense is, and you anoint their feet, you anoint them everywhere, <laughs> put the oils on them, put them on you, put them on them. It will absolutely aid their transition. So, you know, if the question is, should I put oils on my family member in the hospital while they're passing? Yes. Yes, you should. Please do. Um, so anyway, 
back to the myrrh bearing tradition has its roots in the ancient temples of Egypt, and it's still kept alive by a few practitioners today. However, the oil itself is the high priestess and the gateway to the inner divine temple. Oh, I'm going to say that again slower. <clears throat> the oil itself is the high priestess and the gateway to the inner divine temple. In the Eastern Orthodox and Greek Catholic churches, the second Sunday after Easter is called the Sunday of the Myrrh Bearers. Oh my God, that's amazing, Jessica. It's clear that during the time of Christ, being a Myrrhophore was a very esteemed and honorable position to hold. So much so that it was the most famous Myrrhophore, Mary Magdalene, with her alabaster jar that got to see and speak with the resurrected Christ. Let's go back a little further, shall we? Have another oil. Have another drop. Why not? I've got frankincense this time. Really stopping to breathe that oil in and just completely stop. I know it's agitating, right? Like there's a party that's like, come on, get up, get up, get up, go. But no, you have to take this time several times a day to anoint yourself somewhere and inhale those oils and slow down and become present with yourself and spirit. And your whole life will become even more miraculous. So divine feminine traditions of anointing go back in time through royal ceremonial initiations, queenly beauty rituals, legends of alchemical potions of supernatural power and the mother worship mother goddess worship rituals of old that harness the powers of nature and oil represented the spirit of the gods and scent was the fragrance gateway to receiving heavenly vibrations and oil represents the spirit of god and scent is a fragrance gateway to receiving heavenly vibrations the spiritual approach towards the use of essential oils characterized the Egyptian central concept of as above, so below. A natural perfume has the power to create a state of well-being through its existence as a fragrant medium to connect on a higher plane of consciousness. The oils carry frequency and we at our core are electrical beings. It's true. Hi, Daisy. Priestesses of anointing conducted ceremonial rituals for healing and receiving of the divine spirit. The most powerful of these healers were known as the priestesses of Isis, the female spiritual leaders of ancient Egypt. Isis priestesses were proficient at healing the sick as midwives and birthers, conducting ceremonies for the people and spiritually training and anointing the Pharaoh into the role of sovereignty. This is like super powerful. Like, First of all, you have your touch, like your unique soul signature that you have to offer people. And then you put the oils on there and yourself. So essential oils as healing substances embodying the spirit of nature and the living consciousness of plants were the first basis of the first medicines that we know. In no other form are the gifts of nature's nature more potent. Through essential oils, the liquid life force of Mother Nature is made real. These oils are alive. Gary Young himself used to say that essential oils are the closest thing we have to God on this planet. And I get that. You get that? Did you get it yet? Young living oils? Bum, bum. That's new for somebody because it took me a few years to get that. I used to always say, Young living, oil, young, li young living, <laughs> whatever, young living. But I didn't think about it. And I was like, oh, Gary Young's living oils because they're alive. They're alive. Like they are alive. They are alive. We are alive. They help us heal. So as we know, scientifically, essential oils travel through the olfactory senses and into the limbic system of the brain, stimulating the pineal gland and potentially releasing stored emotional trauma. Once these unwanted old vibrations are dislodged by the therapeutically fragrant molecules, not synthetic fragrance, 
They can be felt, they can be honored, carried out of the system to be replaced by healed cells with more light. This is the work of the oils. And this can happen spontaneously without our intention or awareness, but the oils can really help us heal and grow much more quickly when we're mindful in our use of them. So when our inner channels are cleared of fear, doubt, and separation consciousness, we're better able to receive the divine messages of source, our higher selves, and our guides of light. This is one great benefit of regular anointing. So um, somebody drop me a happy face or something if you're still with me, or is this topic just like, what are you talking about, lady? Do what with the oils? Um, because really what I'm talking about is is getting your, your spiritual channel, channel clear, your energetic channel, channel clear, <laughs> and um, being able to receive that um, divine inspiration from yourself and God, like even more. Um, that's what I'm talking about. So, okay, thanks for the happy face, Jessica. Let me just get a sip of water. All right, so I'm going to talk about what is anointing today. What does that look like? So we can hear stories of the past about Mary Magdalene pouring an entire, you know, giant jar of oil all over Jesus' head. And we can hear about the rituals for the kings and the queens and um, what people might do for their guests in ancient cultures also, like put anointing their feet. But I'm going to share some simple anointing steps. And then you can really, all you need to do, thanks for the heart, Patricia. All you need to do technically <clears throat> to anoint yourself like level one is take your roller and, and roll it on with intention whenever you're guided to whenever you want. Okay, that's number one. That's the easiest, easiest possible thing that you can do to be anointing yourself. So this is Palo Santo. My intention for this Palo Santo that I'm so grateful for is that it keeps me spiritually protected. So thank you, Palo Santo, mahalo for keeping me spiritually protected. And I feel guided to anoint the back of my neck and my forehead. And just taking that, that oil and feeling grateful for that really only takes just a moment. <sighs> Okay, so that's like the simplest, fastest way that you could anoint yourself. But if you'd like a breakdown of the process, here it goes. Pause. Breathe. Like at least a few deep breaths. Center yourself in yourself. Feel your connection above. And feel your connection to Mother Earth. And find your center in all of that, in your bubble of beautiful celestial light that you're in. Feel gratitude for the oil. <clears throat> Connect with the plant and thank Mother Earth and God slash source or the universe or the earth again if that's what you need to do for you that makes you feel happy and grateful for this gift that we have the opportunity to use. And then thank the oil. So I've got on uh, Onika here. So Thank you, Onika, for helping me open my heart. And then drop that oil reverently into your non-dominant hand. So sometimes the oils are thick and they take a minute, but this one came out pretty quick today. And I'm just going to do one drop, but you can do as many as you want. And then activating it with the two fingers um, clockwise from your dominant hand helps to open the cells. Then breathe it in deeply. Placing the hands on the body where you wish with your chosen affirmation. I am love. And you don't have to say it out loud. You can say it just inside, but doing it three times is really good. If you can do it seven times, that's even better. It, it opens up the new neural pathways. And, and like the more you connect with yourself, the more you breathe with yourself, your body feels that love that you're giving yourself. And it just opens up your field for all kinds of wonderful things. So um, some great places to anoint yourself or other people um, would be the crown, the forehead, the back of the neck, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, the lower belly, the sacrum, the bottom of your tailbone, 
your thighs, your knees, your feet, both sides, your hands, both sides, your aura, <laughs> your spine, your temples, over your eyes, and ears. You get the idea, okay? So when you bring the vibration of the essential oil to the different energy centers in your body, it also has an effect. So say you're putting it directly on your heart, but then you're like we do with white Angelica, you know, we're making a, we're just clearing out our, our aura there. So, all right, I am going to offer you now a sample priestess, Mur, uh, for oil priestess activation ceremony that you can do for yourself and if you like this then take inspiration from it and make it your own um and i can post it in the comments afterwards if somebody wants it please do not think you have to do it my way please use your oils intuitively and and safely but i'm going to share this so you can use these oils that i'm suggesting that i've chosen you can choose your own you can blend your own you can do just one oil. You can do just one of these places. You can do all of them. You can do them three times or seven times or morning, noon, and night or for a week or a month. You can choose your protocol, but I, I recommend at least in the morning for seven days <laughs> to, I mean, you should feel a shift right away and want to do it every day, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer. So um, adding that in is part of your, um, if you're doing the 14 day reset at any point, adding this practice in or just adding it in any time because it's so easy. Um, and once you have your, you know, say you're only going to use one oil, but you're going to do all of these, um, affirmations or mantras, whatever you want to call them, statements, decrees, um, prayers, um, when you're going to say these things, you could do it all with one oil, or like I said, you could just work on one spot per week or however you want to use this, but I put this together for you. So you can anoint your crown. Did I have it? I do. Northern lights, black spruce. Dropping it right on there. I am divinely guided. I am divinely guided. So there are several reasons. Um, and if there's time at the end, is it really 11.02? Yeah, okay. Ooh, I like not usually doing things this early on the camera. So when we're all done, if there's extra time, then I can go back and talk about why I chose each one of these for that. But I want to get through this and make sure that, that we're able to get through this. So I am divinely guided, anointing the crown of the head with Northern Lights Black Spruce. Um, third eye. Frankincense. And I'm also going to put it over my eyes. So I like to do this opening thing like this, opening the third eye, opening the pineal gland, opening the higher consciousness, opening the receptors to receive divinity from above to <clears throat> come in and fill me. Um, and then also my eyes, my mouth, and my ears. My inner vision is clear. My speech is clear. My hearing is clear. Throat, back of the neck, Valor and or Palo Santo. So I already used Palo Santo, so I'm going to get Valor now. So we're anointing two different parts of the neck for two different reasons. And I want to talk about this real quick. And I want to talk about the power of Valor to help you if you have feelings of anxiety um, or panic. I am an extremely experienced um with these things in my past for many, many, many years and was treated for many years with traditional medication, which did not work. Um, and Valor is the number one thing that I use right here along the vagus nerve and calm it all down. And if you're a stressed person that does jaw tension, you can just move it right on up in there too. Okay, so this blue tansy and these beautiful blend of oils that's in here is going to help to open this throat chakra so you can speak your truth and use your voice. That's the front. On the back of your neck is also an energy center. And this is a place where other people's energies and other energies like to attach to people. 
Okay, so this is another reason why when we use white angelica or brushing off our shoulders, I always, I was taught when I was 19 years old <laughs> in the path that I was studying in that we put frankincense on the back of our neck so that nothing can attach to us and it wipes away or saging behind the neck. So I strongly recommend using holy oils regularly on the back of the neck and the shoulders because um, energies that are not ours like to try to rest there. So I kind of went for it here with the valor a little bit kind of intense. I went on to the shoulders here. But the whole point was the back of the neck and the throat uh, with the mantra, I speak truth. Speak truth. All right. To the heart. Um, Onika is one of the most amazing oils for the heart. This is something that Dr. Pat, if you knew Dr. Pat, was very big on the oils of ancient scripture. And it was the first set that I bought myself as well um, after the uh, premium starter bundle with the Desert Mist. Then the first thing I bought was oils of ancient scripture because I knew what a lot of them were already and I knew the, how valuable it was. <clears throat> so um, Onika is one of the most grounding oils that you can use and one of the best heart openers. It's also a fixative in perfumery. So when you use it, not only does it have a grounding effect and like a blooming effect, but it also will um, mix with any other oils that you use. Like say you use another floral like Joy and you mix it where you put, where you put that Onika, you put the Joy in the same spot. That is absolutely 100% going to make the joy last longer. And now I'm going to say, I am love. <laughs> I am love. So if you had all these oils um, set out on the shelf, boom, 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 and you have this little printed thing and you could do a whole thing. So solar plexus would not take as long as we're taking now. But I hope you're enjoying this. So oh, solar plexus, we're going to use myrtle, which is another one of the um, holy oils. So myrtle. Myrtle. I am authentic and I am enough. So you may have your clothes on. You don't have to stick your hands inside your clothes. You can also put one hand on your back, one hand on your front. But it's nice to do this when you have no clothes on. Um, yeah. Before you get dressed. Anoint yourself. like by, You know, it's like you you wash yourself and then you dry yourself and then you moisturize yourself and then you sh anoint yourself and then get dressed. <laughs> All right. Low belly. Oh, I don't have this one with me, so I have to use something else. I'm going to use thieves. Um, I wrote cypress or myrrh for the lower belly. Cypress and cystus and cinnamon and therefore thieves um, are all very protective for women in the womb area spiritually. So if you want to protect that area of your body, then those oils are really helpful. And I was saying cypress and myrrh and it's I am creative. I am creative, so I'm going to thank these oils and the thieves here for protecting that area. And I'm just putting my hands on my lower belly. And then you can choose another oil for the sacrum, or you can use your hands and just move them back and say it again. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. Um, but I assist this is my preferred oil for the sacrum. Then you can use Panaway or Pine for your knees and use the mantra, I am flexible. And then on your feet, let's see, hyssop, which is mentioned more than any other oil in the Bible. And I feel if you're going to just anoint your feet with one oil every day, hyssop. And um, I'm putting that on both sides of my feet, holding it for a moment, hyssop. And um, abundance are both really, and patchouli are great oils for the feet. Every single day, but hyssop is very, very special. So I am grounded and I am holy. Because you are. You are. All right. And then valor. For the shoulders sweeping down to the hands. We want to anoint our shoulders. We carry a lot here, so... All right, sweeping to the hands. I am steady and I am strong. Isn't that fun? Like, I am steady and I am strong. It's good, right? I am steady and I am strong. Yeah. Woo. All right, hands, cedar wood. 
I didn't bring the cedar wood over, but we can put cedar wood on our hands on both sides. I am divinity in action. Daisy up. And then lastly, with our white angelica on our aura, I am divinely protected. So I do have that written down here. If anybody would like me to post that, I'm happy to share that. And um, then you can, you know, do some, oh, I do have this. Wait, where's the, oh, the activation decree is here at the bottom. So hold on, hold on. All right. So actually, should we do that now? The activation decree, if you were following along by some miracle um, in any of that, um, you could say, I now activate my natural healing abilities in the art of sacred anointing. I feel empowered and I know I will be guided to share these healing oils with others when the time is right. May the ancient ways of anointing be revived within me and known to my conscious mind again. I reclaim my power for the healing of myself and all. Amen. And so it is. Or make that little prayer your own. And uh, let's go back here. Now, you could do something as elaborate as I just described or go back to putting... Daisy, can you come up, please? Thank you, my dog. Um, or you can go back to just anointing your heart with joy every day or abundance on your feet every day. But I will tell you from experience that if you take the time to make yourself one oil that you anoint all those places on your body with and even do this once, it will change your life. If you make, if you go to the trouble to do this, <laughs> it will change your life. If you do something like this daily, it will change your life. And you, you will see what I'm talking about. It is sublime. You'll feel more connected to yourself. You'll feel more blessed. Um, so, or, hey, you know what? You can try the Gary's Great Day Protocol Kit. That set has valor, harmony, joy, and white angelica. And it's got a little a card inside with a protocol that you follow. And you anoint the four different places. And you meditate on like that. So you can make something up for yourself. Um, or you can try something like what I did, or you can just do abundance, or you can just do lavender every day. Um, you will see miracles, I promise you. So if anyone in here has ever done an anointing protocol on themselves, like the Seventh Heaven Protocol, or any protocol at all, would you at some point uh, mind sharing below, maybe not right now, but at some point share below just a short quip of like what protocol you did for yourself and what result you saw because I think that people might be afraid to create these for themselves or think that they don't have the knowledge in them but all you have to say is I have the knowledge in me and it's awakened and you do you do okay so you may not feel worthy of this practice okay but you are so you're like what am I talking about I'm talking about like you're gonna be like oh I don't I can't afford that many oils on my feet every day or I shouldn't be wasting rose on my heart every day listen I'm telling you right now these oils are God's gift to us. Excuse me, but it's true. So this practice is actually a form of self-love and energy or frequency healing. So whether you're a healer and you know it or not, or whether you think you need self-love or not, we all do. So this practice, doing any practice, even one oil, one time, this practice is a form of self-love and energy or frequency healing. It's going to, it's going to clear your stagnant chi or your energy in, in your body it's going to align your cellular energy and your DNA. It's going to open and activate your energy centers. It's going to dedicate our body temple and devotion, and it makes us holy, whatever you believe. Oils are living, and they respond to our intention, and then they merge with us to heal us. You can also anoint objects, for example, your purse, cash, shoes, and door frame with abundance oil. That's an old folklore thing. Um, have a sisterhood anointing party. Anoint your friends. Take that little uh, decree prayer, you know, statement that I made and make it your own and make a priest. I did this with my friends. I made priestess oil blend for everyone, um, intuitively blended and candles. I made little beeswax candles that had a crystal in it. And it was, this is a great party idea. If anybody wants this, um, go do this <laughs> and, um, infused it with a little bit of the essential oil. And then I made these like little priestess gifts and we all did our own, like activating ourselves. Come on. It's inside of us. The oils speak to these dormant talents that are inside of us. So, um, thank you so much for taking the time to, Listen to me talk about all of this. I've realized that I actually just uh, finished for 16 minutes early, which is really rare for me. So I'm going to see this. 
I felt that before that I'm being wasteful even when I use them sparingly. Thank you for sharing that, Jessica, because listen, ladies, we are all, and gentlemen, we are all healing self-worth issues, okay? I'm not worthy of success. I'm not worthy of spending that on myself. I'm not worthy of taking care of myself. I have had friends in the last two days, okay, women that are older, successful, they have all these wonderful things going on in their life, and they're like, Serena, I don't take care of myself in the morning. And I'm like, why? Like, you have the money, you have the time. Like, why, why don't you exercise or why don't you stretch or why don't you, you know, meditate anymore? You know, why, why did you stop that? Well, because I have all this other stuff to do. People need me. Okay, excuse me. Did you hear yourself? Like, how long is that going to go on for until you get some kind of dis-ease, okay? So putting yourself first is absolutely the most important besides, like, your creator, if you're, if that's your belief, um, then you, you have to put yourself first. And taking the time to, I mean, really, you can do this with lavender. It doesn't have to be rose. You know, you don't have to go get that if that's not in your budget. You can, uh, you can awaken yourself with your intention and a drop of water. So that is, hi, Sharon. Um, I'm in the little Q&A uh, commenting section here now as I finished my official presentation, which I do hope you'll go back and watch. Um, you're welcome, Vesna. Can, such a blessing to... Oh, thank you, Patricia. Does anyone have any questions about anything I shared about anointing um, or the process of anointing or uh, the history of anointing? <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Um, something that um, is really cute, too, is sometimes you can get these bottles, little droppers for the five mil bottles and turn it... Um, this is actually from Amy. <laughs> Um, turn this into an abundance dropper that I have every day, uh, every day, every day I drop. And guess what? If I run out of abundance oil and I can't afford more yet, I just make another one. I know it's in there. I just grab what I've got. If all I've got is orange, I'll use it. If all I've got is patchouli, I'll use it. If I, you know, or I can mix some other cinnamon, anything with cinnamon brings abundance. So you can anoint yourself with thieves on the bottom of your feet and boost your immune system at the same time as you're calling in prosperity. And guess what? You can make that an anointing. So consciousness, awareness, mindfulness, and prayerfulness while applying uh, oils with gratitude and intention, I think is like the, the final definition of, of anointing and that, um, you know, it does help to awaken the consciousness. And um, if, if any of you know Karen Malone, Karen Malone, uh, the Ningxia queen, she has an amazing way of anointing. And I had the um, opportunity to <laughs> get anointed by her on my head. She did like a whole prayer thing. Like, oh my goodness gracious, if you can never have anybody do that to you, please have them do that to you. Because if, if, if you just like stand with your friends and speak intentions of loving blessings over each other and touch onto like these parts that I mentioned, the shoulders, the hands, the, you know, whatever. And just like do that to each other. You have no idea how healing that is. No idea. Even one girlfriend, you guys in private, I'm telling you, it will help you awaken a deeper confidence. You're, you'll, you'll understand. You'll be like, oh, that's right. This is a calling for a reason. Like I am supposed to share these oils with people. People need these on their bodies. And this is part of my calling. And so, you know, whether you believe in you know, other lives or spiritual callings or not. Um, I, I think that that's, I think it's a wonderful thing that we are blessed with the opportunity to have these pure oils to be able to um, offer out to the world to help reconnect people with the, you know, their true souls and uh, their true calling. So if no one else has any questions, then I would probably end this early. Anyone else have any questions? I see no questions. So I'm going to go ahead and go. Thank you so, so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Appreciate the leaders having me in to share about the ancient art of anointing. Feel free to message me with any questions you might have. And I will definitely post um, that protocol that I created. And um, I'll just post this whole thing as a post, actually the script, but not as a script. I'll clean it up so that you guys can um, oh, thanks, Jessica. Oh, my God. That means so much to me. You're going to watch it again. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to actually um, go back and edit this post and put all as much of this as can fit. That's a lot, though. I don't know if I can fit that. That's a lot of content. I don't know if I could fit that much in the post. Anyway, I will put it in there for you. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day and aloha. What do you want me to teach next month?